Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. I'm super excited to be here for Black Cannabis Week, y'all. I am going to be talking to you about messaging and about marketing and messaging and how you can use your messaging to grow your cannabis brand. And so let's go ahead and get started. Let's jump in. So let's set the scene. You're in the right place. This is for you. This is a session for you if you are the CEO of a growing brand and you're looking to level up. You're getting some momentum in your business. You're looking for ways to take your efforts to the next level without having to create 17 reels a day. Who else is, who else is sick of creating reels, right? <laughs> you are also in the right place if you are an investment-minded CEO that is ready for more sales, more visibility, and more impact. You are building also, you're also building a cannabis brand and you aren't, maybe you aren't attracting the right customers. Maybe you aren't attracting the best customers at scale and you're really curious about how you can do that. And finally, you are in the right place if you are ready for massive growth in 2022. Who is ready for massive growth in 2022? I know that you are. So let's jump in. Let's talk about what we're going to learn today. So here, here's what you're going to learn over the next 20 minutes. You're going to talk, we're going to talk about the three essential pieces of a million dollar marketing strategy. And we're going to talk about why messaging is essential to growing your cannabis brand. We're going to talk about how to attract more of your best customers at scale and how to repel people who are not for you. And then finally, we're going to go into my five principles of successful, scalable magnetic messaging. And that is what we're going to learn today. So I'm super excited to, to get into that. So <clears throat> here's the thing. What is really keeping you from that next level, whether it's seven figures, whether it's six figures, the thing that is really keeping you from your next level in your business is that your marketing isn't scalable. You have so many moving pieces in your marketing, but you don't have a million dollar marketing strategy that is scalable that will take you to that seven figures or beyond. And what is a scalable strategy? A scalable strategy outlines your magnetic messaging. It outlines your customer journey, or some people call it a funnel. And it outlines your amplification strategy. And I'm going to go into each of those different pieces, but I wanted to let you know that those are the pieces of scalable strategies. It's not just about tactics. It's about messaging. It's about journeys. It's about all the things. And so once you actually get through what we're talking about today, once you adapt, we're actually going to understand how to elevate your messaging to attract your best customers. You're going to learn how to make your marketing work like a well-oiled machine. And so you can get unstuck and onto the next level. So, before we jump in, before we get into the content, let me tell you a little bit about me and who I am. My name is Stacy, and I'm an e-commerce fractional CMO and a Facebook ads expert. And I've generated over $150 million leading paid social efforts at Zappos. I've worked in digital marketing for 11 years, and I've had the immense privilege of working with brands large and small on marketing and advertising strategies. I've worked with brands like Nike and Ugg and Birkenstock, Crocs, New Balance, all these different brands, very big brands. And honestly, I am obsessed. I am obsessed, y'all, with demystifying marketing for CEOs like you so that you can get unstuck and onto that next level with scalable marketing strategies. And so what is messaging really? Let's get into the meat. We're gonna, I, want you, I hope you have your pens out. I hope you're ready to get to that next level because this is what we're going to be talking about. So what is messaging really? Let's set the scene. <clears throat> your message is your magnet. It's how you position your product to attract your ideal customers and show them that your product is the best solution for them. So let me give you a couple examples to illustrate this. Think about Adidas. Adidas sells a lifestyle, not shoes. Carnival Cruise Lines, they focus on fun and relaxation, not boats. And even, and even taking Zappos, for example, Zappos sells service, not just not stuff, right? And so your messaging shows up in everything that you do. It's in your site copy, it's in your social media posts, it's your product pages and the influencers you hire. Because remember, people don't buy products, right? They buy solutions. And so if you want to get, if you want to have your brand to be the top brand, if you want to say like, you know, my CBD brand is the best. It's just not enough to just say I have this best CBD. It's not enough to say that I have the best products on the market. You have to go deeper. You must go deeper. And in order for you to go deeper, to create deeper conversations and to get rid of the, set, the surface level conversations, you have to understand one, who you're talking to. You have to understand not just who they are demographically, that is surface level. Demographic is just bare, bare surface. But you wanna to start to understand what they care about. Start to understand what solutions they're currently looking for. That's how you get, that's how you make messaging go deeper. What are they really running away from? What pain points are they trying to get away from? 
What are transformations are they looking to experience? How can you showcase lifestyle alignment between your product and their life? That's messaging, y'all. That is all messaging. Now, here's the thing. Messaging is just one piece of the puzzle. There are three essential pieces of a million dollar marketing strategy that's going to take you from seven figures to from take you to seven figures and beyond. The first piece is magnetic messaging, what we talked about. And we'll talk about it a little bit more as we get to our five principles. But I want to make sure that you have the context of each of these pieces because they all work together. And so the first piece, again, is magnetic messaging. The second piece is a clear customer journey. And then the third piece, the final piece, is an amplification strategy. So let's go into each of those. <clears throat> let's start with clear customer journey. And so all of your clients, all of your customers, all of your buyers, they have to go on some kind of journey before they buy from you. I like to think of it as how do people go from I have no idea who you are to please take my money. There's a journey there. There's a path that people take. And the goal of your marketing is to build know, like, and trust by moving people through your funnel, by moving people through your customer journey. And so let me give you an example of a customer journey that really just recently happened to me. And now I'm a loyal customer and a and loyal new customer. So there's this company, Moose Labs. Um, they make filters for bongs and joints and stuff like that. And so one day, you know, I was Googling. I was like, how do you get rid of smoker's cough? Because I am sick of having smoker's cough, y'all. And so I was like, how do you get rid of smoker's cough? And so I found a blog post. And so I read the blog post and I'm like, oh, this has got a lot of helpful information, some wellness tips, all that kind of good stuff. But then also what they had in there was a product recommendation. It was one of their products. So I went to the product page. Checked out the product, looked at the description, looked at the reviews, all the things. And then I was like, oh, this is dope. I got some information that, that, that gives me some, some, some tips for, for, for the solution of the problem that I'm experiencing. And then I go to your page and I see that this great product because you have these reviews here and you have this description and it's giving me all the words and all the things that I want to that I want to pay attention to when I care about before I buy a product. And then one thing they did, they gave me a coupon to incentivize that first purchase. I was like, oh, okay, I'll try you out. I've never heard of you before, but you know, I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing. I'm going through this journey, I'm liking what I see. And then after I made that first purchase, then they offered me the um, chance to join their loyalty program. I'm like, oh, now I can get rewards. I can share it with people. I can tell, send their message. Now I'm a repeat customer. I literally just got an order from them last week, y'all, <laughs> right? So that is a customer journey. How do people go from I have no idea who you are to please take my money. You want to map that out because at the end of the day, you need someone somewhere to send your traffic. As cannabis brands, we know we don't own Facebook. We don't own Instagram and pages get shut down left and right. Right. We don't like it, but we don't own the platform. Right. But what we can do is we can use our social platforms, use the influencers that we hire, use all the marketing that we're doing to send people to a funnel that converts. Send people through that customer journey so that they get into our world and that we get them on our things that we own, like our email list, like our website, all the, like our texting programs, all that stuff we own. So, we, so that's the goal of, your, of, your, of your, your social channels and all your amplification strategies is to get people into that customer journey. And speaking of amplification, let's talk about <clears throat> the next piece of it, which is to amplify your impact. And so you need a way to get your message in front of your best clients and for your, in front of your ideal buyers. You have to find ways to get your messages in front of people because if nobody sees it, then you're going to stay small, right? Nobody sees it that you can't scale. And so when you think about amplification, organic marketing is the foundation. So it's things like email marketing, it's content, it's posting on social. All that stuff needs to happen in order for you to get to the next level, in order for you to build a movement behind your brand, in order for you to build a, a <clears throat> community of people, <clears throat> excuse me, in order for you to build a community of people who sing your praises, who tell people about you. Organic marketing is how you build a movement. And so you want to utilize tactics like SEO, search engine optimization, that's what that stands for, social media, guest appearances, guest blogging, guest appearances on other people's channels, paid podcast advertising. If you want to pay to get to the, to the next level, podcast advertising, great place for cannabis brands. Right. So that you can get around things like Facebook ads, things that we cannot do right now as cannabis brands is run ads on Facebook. So those are some things you can do to get around that. So you need to have a way to get your messages out there and content and cannabis brands specifically. We need to become a content engine 
so that you can get found and so that you can stay top of mind and so that you can get around some of these platform regulations. Okay. And so let me know what would attracting more of your best clients and repelling people who are not ready for you do for your business? Would it mean more time that you can actually spend in your spend, spend in your life, <laughs> right? Not just working in your business. Being able to say, you know what? I'm putting out marketing efforts and I'm attracting people who actually are moving my brand forward because they love my brand so much and they're so connected to my messaging that they have to tell everybody else. Right? That's how you build a movement behind your brand. That's how you build a community of people that not only are in community with you, but are actually a movement, meaning they're actually telling people about you, meaning they're actually bringing people into your world. It's living, it's breathing, it's moving. That's how you do it. It's messaging. And so let's talk about how to create magnetic messaging. So I want to go into these five principles so that you can understand what it's going to take for you to create messaging that is magnetic or what are some components and things that you can think of when you're looking at your messaging to assess whether you are um, whether your, your messaging is on point or not. Right. So here's the five principles of magnetic messaging. Let's jump into number one. The first one is that all magnetic messaging must spark curiosity. And so if you think about why people get on Facebook why people get on Instagram, why people get on social channels and all these other platforms. They're not getting on there to be sold to. They're, they're not getting on there saying, you know what, let me get on Facebook and see if I can find a cannabis brand that's going to show me an ad today. Or, or, or find, let me get on Facebook and see if a cannabis brand just pops up and see their content, right? We're getting on Facebook to be entertained, to be educated, to check out from our, our world, to get, a, get a, a, a mental break from all the stuff that's going on, right? That's what we're doing on social. And so the goal of your marketing is to move people to the next step, meaning they have to leave the social platform to check out your information. And even layering on top of that, you only have two seconds to capture someone's attention on social. So what does that mean? That means you have to give them a reason to pay attention. And the way that you give them a reason to pay attention is by sparking their curiosity. You do that by leading with empathy, talking about them, so think about your marketing, think about your messages. How can I incorporate more empathy into my messages? Being rela relating to the people who are consuming my content, how can I do that? <clears throat> and it leads into principle number two, which is your messaging isn't about you. I see, I see social posts all the time. It's like, oh, buy my hemp tea because it tastes great, because it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. But here's the thing, people are not thinking about your products. They're thinking about the problems that they have. They're thinking about the solutions that they want to experience. They're not thinking, oh my goodness, I want some hemp tea. They're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm stressed out. I would love a cup of tea, right? Like they're, that's what they're thinking. That's what we're, and especially if you're thinking about getting on social platforms or getting all the, on all these other platforms, right? We're not necessarily getting on there to say, hey, like I wanna buy something just because I wanna buy it, right? Just because it's there. We're getting, we buy things because we believe that we will experience a transformation, whether it's a small transformation or a large transformation. And so think about how you can incorporate transformations and solutions into what you're marketing, into your messaging, into the things that you're saying. Because it's not about you. It really is not. It's about your customer. It's about the person who is consuming what you're doing. <clears throat> and principle number three. Principle number three is to speak to one person. And so this is one that people, that, that this sticks out when I do these kind of presentations. And so think about your consumers. Think about yourself, actually, as a consumer. Consumers want to understand that you understand them and their needs before they give you any of their money or their time or their email address because your email address is currency. Okay? So customers want personalized messages. And so that's how you can infuse your, your, your magnetic messaging into that. You infuse personalization because in order for something to be personalized, you have to understand who you're talking to. And in order for you to attract your best customers and not people who are freebie seekers, not people who just want your samples, not people who are just going to be making impulse buys, you want to speak their language. Literally use the language that they are using. The way that we describe our products sometimes and our solutions sometimes is not the way that our consumers describe them. And so if you're looking at your reviews, you're looking at your comments, you're looking at things that people respond to your, your emails, you're looking at things that the touch points that you have with your customers and understanding what the voice of the customer is. You can use all of that stuff to infuse it into your messaging. And so let me give you an example. Take moms, for example. If your audience is moms, 
There are so many different types of moms, <laughs> okay? You have moms that have that with toddlers that want maybe a discreet oil for their daily life. You have moms who are becoming empty nesters and they want pain relief and want to, you know, want to so that they can go on these trips and do all the retired things that they want to do. You have moms who just want to relax their muscles after a run. Maybe they're training for a marathon and they just really need that extra bit of relaxation. So there's so many different types of moms. So when you think about speaking to one person, think about your best customers, not the people who are coming on, who are driving you nuts in your, in your, with your customer service, not the people who are buying and returning and buying and returning and buying and returning all the time. Not those people. Think about your best customers, the ones that sing your praises, the ones that you get on social and they're always tagging you on something because they're posting about you all the time. Who are those people? What attributes do they share? What is their lifestyle? What lifestyle do they aspire to if it's not currently what they're experiencing? What movements do they align with? Movements like luxury living, minimalism, soft life, van life, there's so many, just travel life, all of these kinds of things are messages and, and movements and attributes of your customers that you can use in your data, that you can use in your marketing and you can use in your messaging. And so let's talk about principle number four. Principle number four <clears throat> is that they compel action. Successful magnetic messages always compel action. So all of your content should be actionable. And again, our goal with marketing is to, is, is to get people to take an action, right? It's not to get people to just say, oh, that's cute, like, comment, and scroll, right? It's to get people to take an action. It's people say, oh, I am so aligned with that that I can't, that I'm going to stop being social and I'm going to go to your website and I'm going to take your quiz. I'm going to look at your bundles. I'm going to look at whatever it is. You, or I'm going to come to your dispensary, whatever it is. Don't expect people to just do it because you post something, right? Tell them you want them to buy that bundle. Tell them to take that, that quiz. Tell them to visit your dispensary. You have to be very actionable and tell people what you want them to do in order for them to take the next step. Okay, last principle, principle number five. It has to be scalable. Messaging is scalable. So a lot of business owners think that they need to be on TikTok and Pinterest and Instagram and doing podcasts and doing all the things. But here's the thing, those are tactics. Those are platforms, right? But messaging is what you're saying on those platforms. Messaging is who you're talking to on those platforms. Because we know Gen Z is popular with TikTok, but there are, there are a lot of other people that are on TikTok, yes. But if your customer is not making their buying decisions on TikTok, why are you on TikTok? Right? They may get on TikTok to scroll and to check out from life, but if they're not actually making purchase decisions on, on TikTok, why are you putting all the effort into it? Right? So you don't have to do all the things. You just have to figure out what messages hit with my customers, what messages move people to the next step. And how do I take that message and I scale that? And the way that you scale messaging is through testing. So when you're testing, you want to test, you learn, you iterate, and you scale on what works. So you test a specific message figure out, am I actually getting traction from this? And it's like, oh, this one message that I had, that this, this message about, uh, about stress relief for moms who are you know, running marathons is very, very strong. It brings me a lot of customers. How do I say that in video? How do I say that in reels? How do I say that in an email? How do I say that in still, you know, with still images? How do, I, how do I communicate that with my brand and my images and all the influencers that I hire? How do I communicate that message, that one message, in a lot of different ways, okay? So you don't need to be everywhere. You just need to create messaging that cuts through the noise and attracts your ideal customers. And so you gotta look at your data. Look at your data. There's so, many, so much data out there available for us. Your Google Analytics, your Instagram insights, your Facebook insights, your email subject lines, which ones are getting open the most? What messages produce the best results? Can you turn that into a live, into a reel, into an email, into a carousel? And how do you say the same message in a different way? Okay. So those are the five principles. I'll go. I'll recap them again so that you so that you could get them. Number one is spark curiosity. Number two is that your messaging is not about you. Number three is that you have to speak to one person. Number four is that you can, they must compel action. And number five is you got to make it scalable. Got to make it scalable. Okay. So let's close out. Let's talk about. We talked about a lot today, y'all. I definitely gave y'all a lot of good information. And so we talked about the essential, the three essential pieces of a million dollar marketing strategy. That was messaging. It was customer journey. It was amplification. We talked about 
why messaging is essential to your growth as a cannabis brand, regardless of what of what lane you're in within can within the cannabis industry, especially this industry, because people care. People want to know that they're buying from people who understand them, not just because you have a great product. That's the surface level. Having a great product is the foundation, right? That is expected <laughs> to have a great product. Okay, messaging is how you take things to the next level. We also talked about how to attract more of your best customers and how you can repel everybody else. And we also talked about the five principles of successful, scalable, magnetic messaging. And so really what you need to get to that next level, what's holding you back from that seven figures? How do you get there without burning out? You need a million dollar marketing strategy that is anchored by your magnetic messaging. All of your content should be anchored by your messaging. All of it. Okay. So you can choose to stay where you're at. You can choose to just, you know, to take some of this information and just say, you know what, that's really good. Or you can take the next step. You can take action. So you can head over to roadmap to one million.com, check out my free million dollar marketing strategy series. And that's going to go in deep about messaging, about customer journey, about all the things about amplification, about what we talked about today, gives you some actionable tips and all the kinds of things that you can do to assess your, your messaging, your marketing and all that kind of stuff to get you to the next level. And so I hope this presentation was very helpful to you. Again, my name is Stacy, and I am super excited to deliver you this information to start to see your messaging elevate so that you can take your business to the next level.